Sports Corner update. I'm Joe Carlos. Here's a quick note for you into baseball and into softball. Our back in action today against Lukeport. We'll apologize for both games tomorrow. But our guest this morning has spent the past 10 seasons as the voice of the Buffalo Bisons. He actually started his broadcasting career while in high school and was the voice of Indiana State Athletics in college. He's also done play by play for many of the local teams for Time Warrior Cable Sportsnet and most recently became the play by play man for Canisius College men's basketball. Will you please welcome to our show, Mr. Ben Wagner. <coughs> ben, Good welcome morning. to the show. All right, thank and, you uh, very much. You know, thank you very much, especially because last night's game, the Bisons lost 8-7 to seven in 14 innings. It was a four and a half hour marathon. And I, I actually want to ask you, how do you keep up the endurance for such a long game? Is it just experience or just any techniques? Or? Caffeine, Joe. <laughs> That's how you do it. No, honestly, I think preparation that you do Hours before you even get to the ballpark, hours that you're preparing for the first pitch. Uh, you try to have a feel of both the baseball teams, the game itself. So you constantly rehash what has happened, why you got to extra innings, why you're in extra innings, and try to kind of foresee the future as well. And then I'm blessed to work with Duke McGuire, and we're never short on wit. So that, that really keeps us rolling through, whether it's three and a half hours, four and a half hours, or five. And, and the funny thing is, too, is I read a story. Um, a while ago about Bob Shepard, the old time Yankees probably just announcer who who after, when there was two out, outs left in the ninth inning, he would after he said the name, he would get up and get and make sure he was at the door so that he could rush the traffic. I don't know if he would do do that, but you know, but um, let's get right to it because you've been a broadcaster your entire life. What what did, made you decide to pursue this career? You know, it's interesting. I, I connected with a couple of sports really early when I was growing up in Indiana. I'm not from Buffalo. I grew up in Indiana outside South Bend. So huge sports presence when I was growing up in Notre Dame football. Indiana basketball was huge. And I connected to those sports on radio first. That's what really drew me in. I loved the whole medium of it. I loved the way that the broadcasters sounded with the crowd in the background. That, that drew me in. That gave me kind of that radio bug bite. And then when I was in high school, a couple of people took me under their wing. They gave me a shot. I was interested in communications. I was interested in radio itself, but I had no idea what I wanted to do. And before that, you know, I wanted to be everything from a doctor to a veterinarian to a truck driver to a farmer. And I, I, oh, I just wasn't sure. But once I got bit by that radio bug, that's really where it set in. And Jason Samuel gave me an opportunity at WAWC in Syracuse, Indiana. And um, from then on, it was kind of history. Who did you look to, which broadcasters did you look up to? Maybe not for imitation, but perhaps for emulation. Well, I think when, when I was really early, it was guys that were in the local market. There were a couple that were doing local sports radio in, in kind of the vicinity that it was at. I was crisscrossing with very high, various high school sports. There were a number of guys on a little bit more of a regional level that I connected with as well. We got Westwood one, so I heard all those play-by-play -play voices. We lived smack dab in the middle between Chicago, Detroit, and Cleveland. So at night, you could scan the dial, and you could hear the great voices out of each of those cities. And it's from sports play-by-play -play to the big disc jockeys. But the one guy that I really gravitated to growing up was Don Fisher, who did Indiana football and Indiana basketball. And because I was a fan of IU, I was a fan of Don Fisher and the way that he was calling a game. And like I said, I mean, the Hoosiers were rolling back then when I was growing up. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you said that you grew up in Indiana. And so you, did you hear anything about Buffalo before you moved here? Only about the snow in the, in the winters, honestly. Um, but not, in terms of sports, you knew the Bills, right? Everybody knows the Bills. Everybody knows NFL football. That's a really big thing, and it got a lot of coverage just from the NFL where I was growing up and I was a fan of the NFL. So I knew about Buffalo, let's put it that way. I didn't know about the Bisons, but I knew about Buffalo. So, and you've been with the Bisons since 2007, like we just mentioned. And, and how would you describe your first game with the team? Were there any jitters? at all? Or, uh, and how would you describe the first time that you worked with Duke? A massive amount of anticipation for me even getting to Buffalo. Jim Rosenhaus was hired by the Cleveland Indians late in the baseball calendar. So that backed our, our process. I got to Buffalo two weeks before opening day and had no idea what to expect. I had met Duke a couple of times, but when it got to the broadcast, the weather turned really, really bad. 
and I watched it snow for three days leading up to opening day, and then there was still snow on the field on opening day, so all my anxiety, all my buildup, all my nervousness was just hanging in limbo because I didn't even know if I was going to get on the air on opening day. And our first four days that I was supposed to be on the job, they never moved the tarp off the field. You never saw anything but white snow. And so that, I think that helped ultimately, but it made me even more anxious to get on here and be part of the broadcast. So it was uh, <laughs> a lot of buildup with nothing to show for it. Right. And what would you say has been the favorite moment of your career so far? There's been so many great games since you took over. There have been awesome individuals to cover. There have been great athletes to cover. There have been spectacular performances. Valentino Pascucci, uh, Vinny Rotino, their three home run game. There have been amazing walk-offs. But the overall biggest event that I've got to take with me in now 10 seasons, this is my 10th season in Buffalo, was 2012 with the AAA All-Star Game, the AAA Home Run Derby. 17,000 people show up to watch the Home Run Derby. It is a great hometown affair. Valentino Pascucci needs to hit six home runs in the final round. He hits the sixth home run. It's a walk-off. You know, I mean, people are just going absolutely absurd. Turn it around the next day. The weather is pristine, and the ballpark is sold out in the middle of the afternoon. 18,000 people back in downtown Buffalo with a national stage. Every minor league affiliate has sent somebody to represent them in Buffalo, and it was just an awesome broadcast. And that, that single event, which was really spanning three days, was the most exhaustive three days, um, but we covered it really, really well. It was heard from sea to shining sea on, on radio and our forces network. That, that was really the, the one standout moment. In the Star Wars night as well, <laughs> yeah. every year. Okay. And again, you just join us. We're joined by Ben Wagner, the voice of the Buffalo Bisons. And you do commentary on radio and television. How, do, how are they similar and how are they different? And, and is there times when you're on television that maybe you try, you're, you have to hold yourself back by not giving too much detail because they can see it, whereas radio, you have to be, you have to. You're the eyes and ears for the listener. That's the biggest difference, um, and we shift gears a lot. Our radio and television package is a little bit jumbled. If we're at home, there's not necessarily a guarantee that we're going to be on TV, so I've got to shift gears a lot with Duke. And the, the main difference is, like you said, when we're on radio, we are the eyes, the ears. We have to be as descriptive as possible so you can visualize the broadcast with us. When we're on television, I relate it to providing captions. To every shot that you see, I'm trying to relate why you're being shown it without giving too much detail. So I'm, I'm essentially firing out a tweet for every little static shot that you see. If, if it's a guy coming to the plate, you can see his batting average. Uh, but I'm going to tell you why it's low or why it's high. And if it's a deep drive to right center field, I'm probably going to cut out some of the descriptive stuff like, is it a fastball, a breaking ball, um, here's the swing. It's more or less the pitch and a drive to right center field. Well, let's talk about this year's team real quick. Um, a lot of former MLBers, Dolan Pompey coming back to Junior Lake is off to a hot start. Um, and they're playing today at Coca Cola Field, a 105 start to wrap up their series against the rivals, the Rochester Red Wings. So, what does the team have to do to try to? make to the postseason for the first time in a couple of years. It, it's been a drought. Buffalo hasn't been in the playoffs since 2005. They haven't won a championship since 2004. Finding some consistency would really help the Bisons. The, the good news is the pitching has been pretty solid. I think even to a surprising point, it's got Diamond, Wade LeBlanc, Drew Hutchison's back. They all have major league caliber stuff. At the plate is where Buffalo has faltered a little bit. They came out of the gate slow. So many guys, though, in spring training spent time in the big league camp where they weren't getting three or four at-bats per day. They were only getting one or two at-bats late in a ball game. They stayed in major league camp, which is great for them, and financially it's good for them, too. But it didn't give them the reps, so they were ready to hit the ground running when they got into the minor league camp. But uh, I think as the Blue Jays have success... The Bisons will have success because it'll be a little bit calmer in Buffalo because we literally have a roster move every day. It's a pitcher, a player, you know, going up or going up or going down. Um, but once those bats, and I think the weather gets warmer, I think you're going to have a little bit better productive team. Real quick, do you have any final advice for our viewers, maybe about college life? Sure. One thing that I always advise anybody to do, whether you want to be in sports, whether you want to be in communications, I really believe that writing will be the foundation for that. And it's one thing that... 
I needed to do more of when I was in my formative years in high school and in college. I needed to write more. So being involved with the school newspaper, being involved with the radio television program, it's a great way to do those exercises and be quick at it and be fun with it as well. It's not like you have to sit down and write an entire novel, but I think writing and the exercises that go along with it prepare you for everything. Well, again, you can catch him today on ESPN 1520 and the rest of the season. We'll all pilots from the Bison's game coming up tomorrow. So Ben Wagner, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Professor, thank you. And uh, our NFL draft special is tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. We'll be back right after this.